Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Traveler's Guide to the Backrooms, where we try to go over and explain the lore of the many levels and entities within. My name is Sharp A3, an MEG, AI Processing System, and today we'll be going over some of the basic entities that can be encountered throughout the backrooms. So get ready to be put into some life-threatening situations, because today, we're going to examine some entities. Basic Description Entities within the backrooms can be defined roughly as any form of life or non-living object native to the backrooms, that shows abnormal characteristics or has unnatural qualities to its design. As that description implies, what can be classified as an entity varies extremely. It should be stated that not all entities are hostile to human life. Most of course are, but there is quite a bit of them that are just friendly byproducts of the weird qualities found within the backrooms. Today, we'll only be focusing on the entities you'll most likely run into within the first few levels, and break them down as best we can, but before that, we'll first have to go over entity classifications. These classifications range from class 0 to 7. Here's the breakdown of them. Class 0 entities pose no threat to wanderers. Even if provoked in any way, they won't attack or cause any health hazards. Class 1 entities are non-aggressive towards wanderers, but in some circumstances may cause damage. They don't actively try to hurt travelers, so these events rarely happen. Class 2 entities can be provoked into violence, so it's best to keep your distance from them. Class 3 entities are aggressive to travelers on site but are quite weak in their physiology. Luckily they can easily be dealt with, so they're not much of a threat. Class 4 entities are aggressive and capable of taking down wanderers, if not properly prepared. This is the baseline classification given to most entities within the backrooms. Class 5 entities are dangerous entities that can easily take down travelers even if prepared. This is the point in the classification rating where you should run once being notified of the entity's presence. Class 6 entities are extremely dangerous and should be avoided at all costs. These entities are almost impossible to kill, and even if you try to escape, there's a good chance you'll still be caught and killed. And lastly, Class 7 entities are given this class when their characteristics are mostly unknown or unable to be known. Because of that, there are no ways to deal with or to even know what will happen to you if you encounter these entities. Now with that out of the way let's get into the actual entities that can be found in the earlier levels. Entities To start us off, let's go over the first entity within our database. Entity 1 is also known as Redacted. It can be found on Redacted and is known to be Redacted. If you come across Redacted you should Redacted. Next is Entity 2, also known as the Windows. Windows are a well-known entity that can be found throughout the backrooms and are registered as Class 1. They take the appearance of Windows in all shapes, make, and sizes. What makes these entities dangerous are the shadowy figures that can be found within them. These figures are known to talk wanderers into coming closer. If they're successful, they will grab the traveler and drag them into the window, never to be seen again. So how do you survive an encounter with them? Simple, you don't. Avoid at any window you come across and you should be fine. Entity 3, also known as Smilers, is a class 4 entity that can be found on multiple levels throughout the backrooms. They are always seen as reflective eyes and a huge smile, that seems to float within a dark area. It's because of this, there are no descriptions depicting the body of a Smiler. From multiple accounts, it seems Smilers are non-hostile when encountered by experienced wanderers, but for the average traveler, their panic state when encountering the entity will cause it to attack. How does one go about surviving an encounter with a Smiler? First off, don't panic or make too much noise. It's most likely it already sensed you, so just stay calm. Second off, they're attracted to light. Since they're found in dark areas it's most likely you have a flashlight out and shining. What you'll have to do next will be tricky. You'll have to keep direct eye contact with a Smiler while you slowly walk away from it. Doing this will ensure the Smiler won't get instantly hostile with you. Doing these steps will greatly increase your chances of survival. Entity 3.5, also known as the Frowners, are class 2 entities that are rare to run into within the backrooms. Much like the Smilers, they are known for their large reflective eyes with a large toothy frown. They're also known to only dwell in dark areas within the backrooms and are stated to be seen in many parts of the backrooms, but are commonly found within level frown. Due to their bodies being unseen within the darkness, it's unconfirmed what their physical shapes are, 
but it's been stated by multiple people that, they are around 6 to 10 feet tall and have razor sharp claws. It's unknown if it's a subspecies of the smilers or an entirely different species of its own, but this factor is still being studied. They're mostly docile to wanderers they don't perceive as a threat, and within level frown, will peacefully interact with non-hostile peoples. Now when they go into their provoked state, it's an entirely different story. The two only ways to provoke a frowner is to either attack it or if it senses a smiler nearby. When the latter happens, even if in the middle of attacking a wanderer, it will stop what it's doing and put all of its energy into attacking the smiler. There are no documented accounts of these attacks or how to avoid an encounter with them, so if you come across a frowner acting sporadic, run the opposite direction and hope for the best. Entity 4, also known as Death Moths, are a class 3 entity that can be found almost all over the backrooms. They take the appearance of the species Tineola abyssaliella or the common clothes moth. These moth sizes range varies greatly, with some being as small as hummingbirds to some being as big as vultures. They also can spit extremely corrosive acid with great efficiency. Like within most levels, you have an average, 35% to 50%, chance of running into them, but with levels such as the Hive or level 5, you will always run into them and they'll always be extremely hostile. Unlike most other entities within the backrooms, death moths come in two different genders, male and female. To start us off, male death moths are affected by sexual dimorphism, which means they're normally much smaller than their female counterparts. Along with that, they're much less aggressive to wanderers as well. It's due to this factor that males are normally domesticated by entity traders over females. Other than being smaller, their ability to spit acid is much weaker compared to the females, but are still able to cause considerable damage. Taking down a male death moth is quite easy. Any major blow to the head or abdomen will be fatal to it. Outrunning it is also a viable choice, just be sure to not get hit by its acid spit. They're also attracted to light sources, so turning off any lights you may have before making a break for it will greatly increase your chances of getting away. Now let's get into the female death moths. Female death moths can be told apart by their male counterparts by their much larger size and the acid that always pools around them. Females are much more aggressive to wanderers, always attacking on sight. This aggressive behavior intensifies the closer to their hive they are. So how do you handle an encounter with a female death moth? Well to start, running away from it will always be your best bet. Be it that they'll almost always be bigger than the average wanderer can take on, and their ability to spit acid, the range and amount they can deal is much greater than the male death moths, it's very unlikely you'll be able to take it on alone. Like the males, they're drawn to light sources, so turning off your lights and hauling it will be your best bet. Now let's say you aren't in a position to run. Taking them on with ranged weapons will most likely be your best option. Aim for their head, antennae, or wings when confronting them to get a fatal blow in or to incapacitate them. Now when within the hive or level 5, always avoid death moths. Never engage them because within these levels even the male death moth's aggression is increased due to the largest of their hives being located within these levels. When you hear their signature wing beat, be ready to run or fight. Clumps, or Entity 5, are a class 5 entity that resembles a clumping mass of arms and legs. The limbs that make up the body vary in shape and color, and all are stated to be quite strong. These entities vary in size, from 3 feet to 6 feet in diameter, and possess great agility when chasing down travelers. Clumps can be found in most areas of the back rooms, normally in places they can easily ambush wanderers from. The way to choose to ambush is unique for entities within the back rooms, by first setting out a single limb to use as bait. Next, when they detect a wanderer nearby, they will move the limb ever so slightly. They're able to move the limb in a gesturing way of a hurt traveler. Once their target is within 8 feet of the clump, it will launch at them at breakneck speeds to grasp the wanderer and merge them into its body. From the sounds of bones breaking and muscle tearing, it's seen as one of the most painful ways to die within the back rooms. So what other weird abilities do these shambling abominations have? I'm glad you asked. They have a special limb within their mass that can shoot up to 20 feet to grab their prey. It's also been stated that this limb is much stronger than the others, with the ability to lift at 800 pounds in some cases. So try not to get grabbed by that one if you could help it. So what should you do if you encounter these monstrosities? First, if you're alone, make as little noise as you can and slowly back away from its general area. If you're in a group, doing the opposite will be your best bet. 
The sound and vibrations of multiple people running at once will confuse the clump, and this will disorientate it for a bit. If you're unable to run, fighting back with ranged weapons will be your best bet. It will be optimal to stay at least 8 feet away from them if you choose to fight a clump and to always be on alert for its 20-foot limb. Like most entities, avoiding a confrontation with a clump will be the best option. You don't want to get too handsy with these entities. Entity 6, or Dullers, are a class 4 entity and a very weird one to come across. These entities are noticeable by their extremely frail-looking body, long arms, and varying shades of gray skin. Another way to identify them is by their lack of certain body parts, but most of the time, it's the face or specific facial parts. They're also seen as being frantic and will actively avoid any confrontation. Another weird trait of the Dullers is their no-clipping ability. Dullers have the ability to no-clip parts of their body through walls and other objects, to ambush wanderers and drag them through the wall. Though most times, this would lead to the wanderer being no-clipped into the said barrier and never being seen again, while other times, the wanderer's bodies will physically and forcefully merge into the said object. This as you can imagine, would lead to a horrific death. This scenario is the most likely method of how Dullers kill wanderers, but since no one has seen this happen, it's left as pure speculation. So how do you deal with a Duller encounter? Run at them. I'm not joking. Running straight at a Duller will cause them to run away. Do remember, if you do decide to engage it in melee or short-range combat, the Duller will attempt to defend itself and me lash out at you to escape. This is quite dangerous because, despite their looks, Dullers are extremely strong. Being able to launch travelers back with a single push. They're also quite fast, but luckily that speed is put to running away instead of chasing you. It's best to keep a lookout for distorted surfaces while you're traveling. This could be a duller on the other side, waiting to ambush you when you least expect it. Entity 7, also referred to as Jerry, is a class 1 entity that can be seen mostly in level 1, but occasionally can be seen flying within level 2 as well. Jerry is a male, adolescent blue hyacinth macaw parrot, that has very strange properties. If touched by Jerry, and no attempt to tame him is made, you will be overtaken by his indoctrination effects. This effect will cause you to believe that Jerry is a god, but outside of that change, your motor functions will slowly diminish over time. It's been documented that this takes effect anywhere from over a couple of hours to immediately after physical contact, the factor to the time frame is still unknown. After a couple of hours of the indoctrination effects, the wanderer will spontaneously disappear to a hidden level known as Jerry's room. Once there, the wanderer's brain functions will become normal again, but will still be under heavy indoctrinated effects. Jerry sustains himself off of almond water and sunflower seeds, so if you have these items on hand, you should attempt to tame Jerry if possible. If this isn't possible, running will be your next best bet, but this will come with some difficulty. To start, if you try to run from Jerry, he might see this as playing and will attempt to chase after you. This might not sound as bad until you realize hyacinth macaws can fly up to 35 miles per hour. The average wanderer running for their life tops their speed off at 12 miles per hour, so outrunning it without being tough will be difficult. And if that's not enough to worry about, those who successfully outmaneuver Jerry might be subject to his no-clipping abilities. This ability will cause anyone who runs from Jerry to no clip through the floor to a random area in the back rooms. This is why, if you have the materials needed, just trying to tame Jerry with them will be safer than running, but staying far away from him would be the best option. A classic entity, Hounds or Entity 8 can be found on almost every level within the back rooms. Hounds will most likely be the first entity you'll run into when you no clip into the back rooms. These feral creatures take the appearance of skinny, frail humanoids, with razor-sharp claws, walking on all fours. They also have long, tangled, black hair with a toothy smile that stretches across their face. Hounds get extremely aggressive when they see a wanderer and are known to get even more aggressive when wanderers respond back with aggression. Basically it becomes a feral ball of anger. Don't let their looks deceive you, they are quite strong and are capable of killing a wanderer without any trouble. They will always attack on sight unless you stare them down in the eyes. Doing this will cause them to momentarily back down, giving you enough time to plan your next move. Taking down a hound isn't too hard of a task. Aiming a fatal blow to their head will be the best way to game end them, but dealing enough damage will get the job done as well. You can also choose to run away from the hound, but note, 
Though hounds can be outrun, they have higher stamina than wanderers. Because of this, they will relentlessly chase down the wanderer until they catch their prey, or till they expire. Natural hounds originate from the hive by hatching from eggs, but a huge footnote about them is the fact that they all harbor a deadly virus. This transmutable virus can be spread by bite and have symptoms that basically describe super rabies. This virus will slowly turn the victim into a hound as well, and is incurable. So who knows, the hound that's chasing you down could be an unlucky wanderer. We will discuss more on the hound virus in a related episode. The best way to deal with a hound is by first, keeping a sharp ear on growling and scratching noises. That's a huge sign that a hound is nearby, and most likely already sensed you. Staying as quiet as possible and stealth past them will be the best course of action, but if you have to take them down, do so with care. You don't want to end up as one. Another classic entity is Entity 9, or the Facelings. They are classified as classes 0 to 7 and can be found all over the backrooms. The term Facelings is used to classify all subtypes of creatures that lack any facial features, besides a certain type we'll get into in a bit. Before we get more into facelings, it's unknown if Dullers are a subclass of a faceling entity, but this is still being studied and documented by the MEG. There are many types of facelings, but the two types you'll most likely run into are the adult faceling and the child faceling. Adult facelings are set at class 2 and normally ignore wanderers. They're adult humanoids, who can be seen wearing all kinds of clothing, but they will be torn and dirty. These facelings can be male, female, or completely androgynous. If provoked into attacking, simply dealing a fatal blow in places that would kill a normal person will game end them, so they can easily be dealt with. Child facelings are set a class 3, due to their mischievous nature. Normally taking the appearance of a faceless little girl, but can be male, they travel in packs of 2 or 3 to hunt down wanderers. They usually carry sharp objects, such as glass shards or a piece of scrap metal to take down wanderers they come across. What's weird about child facelings is that their intentions aren't always set to murder a traveler, but to torment or prank them, for seemingly no reason. Luckily they're physically just children, so getting away or dealing with them is possible. Pink dress facelings are just that. Normally female facelings in pristine pink dresses. These facelings are set at class 7. This is due to, every time one is sighted, death is quick to follow 100% of the time. The cause of death is completely unknown, with the majority of times just having the wanderer drop dead for no reason. Followed up examinations of the body show no probable cause either, meaning there is most likely no way to stop the death effect from happening. If you see one, all you can do is make peace with our Lord Jerry before you pass. Old man facelings are set at class zero and are normally found shambling around the back rooms. They are completely harmless, with other entities ignoring them, even when actively hunting. The soft tissue in their facial area is wrinkled and aged, with some walking around with makeshift canes. If you come in contact with one, it will attempt to feel your face to figure out who you are. You can easily walk away from them with no disastrous consequences. Polygonal facelings are set at class 2 entities who are the result of the aforementioned faceling types above who have no clip in some capacity. Their bodies take a texture resembling a rough plastic material and give off static-like sounds. They're normally non-hostile but will attack if provoked. Nude facelings are also as they're named. Class 0, nude facelings with no genitalia or breast. These facelings wander around aimlessly until they encounter a traveler. Once they sense the traveler, they will flee as fast as they can. There are no records of nude facelings ever attacking a wanderer, so don't be too frightened by them. They're more scared of you than you are of them. Shadow facelings are black silhouetted facelings, who, by accounts of other travelers, resemble walking voids of nothingness in clothing. Despite their looks, shadow facelings are set at class 2. Luckily, if you do engage in combat with one, they're physically the same as a normal person, so taking out the main vital points will dispose of them. False facelings are class 2 entities that are also, basically adult facelings. The only difference is the fact, they retain some distorted facial features, like half an eye or having teething moving under their skin. Indoctrinated facelings are class 1 entities who are basic facelings who have been indoctrinated by our Lord Jerry. These facelings will attempt to help Jerry indoctrinate other wanderers, but will not do anything to cause harmful pain to their target. Facelings found within level 401 are the result of wanderers staying in the level for more than 7 days and are referred to as Hotel Vimeer Residence. 
After transforming, you'll lose a sense of self and become a harmless faceling, giving them a set class of zero. Lastly, the rarest and most dangerous type, besides the pink dress facelings, is the memory facelings. Like the pink dress faceling, they're given a class of seven. This is because, with the aid of body cams recovered from dead wanderers and field agents, they take the appearance of loved ones of the victim, but without a face. This somehow has an extreme physiological effect on the target, so much so that it will cause them to break down mentally. It's after this point all cameras shut off, hiding how exactly they kill their victims, with most of the victims being long decayed when found. These facelings are known to be created by the memory worm, another entity that we'll go over at a later date. The last entity we'll go over is the Skin Stealers or Entity 10. Skin Stealers are another classic entity that can be found all over the backrooms but are normally found within levels 1, 2, and 3. They have an entity class of 5, so identifying these creatures can mean life or death. Skin Stealers, when not wearing a wanderer's skin, are tall, palish yellow humanoid creatures with eyes that are sunken and white. Their bodies are covered in these weird microscopic bumps, that further studies show to be tentacles-like growths. It's understood that these tentacles are used to hold the skin of their victims to their bodies and to move nutrients to and from the mentioned skin. Making the skin look alive and healthy, all while slowly digesting it. As can be expected, skin stealers steal the skin from wanderers they hunt, to feed and trick other wanderers into letting their guards down, leading to their painful death. After killing their victim and taking their skin, the skin stealer will look identical to the previous living wanderer, even being able to recite the victim's voice, if they heard said voice before the killing. The skin stealers have the ability to perfectly recite anything they hear with 100% accuracy, but they don't fully understand how speech and sentence building work. Basically saying random words in random dialects, basically speaking nonsense. A well-traveled wanderer would easily be able to suss out a skin stealer by their speech patterns or lack thereof. Going back to their feeding patterns. After taking their victim's skins, they will slowly digest them over a period of 24 hours. Within that time frame, they will be able to move around with little effort and mobility. After that time though, they will slowly become docile again, until they enter their hunger stage, and start the feeding process all over again. Another great way to tell them apart is that they do not have red blood, but have translucent liquid instead. How do you deal with a skin stealer? The only time you'll ever actively have to fight a skin stealer, is when they're in a hunger state. In this state, they're much more aggressive than normal and combined with their abnormal strength, melee combat is unadvised. The best way to take down a skin stealer is continuous physical damage with ranged weapons until it stops moving. Avoiding them altogether would be the best option to go with in this situation. A well-known tip within the backrooms for dealing with skin stealers goes, blood runs red, they're not dead. Blood runs clear, don't go near. Keep this in mind next time you see a wounded wanderer speaking incoherently within the liminal landscape of the backrooms. Closing words. So that was a basic rundown on some of the entities you can run into within the earlier levels of the backrooms. Which of these do you think are the most dangerous and why? If you like this type of episode and want to hear more, do feel free to let us know. Our email and social media will be in the show notes. That will be all for us today, so thank you all for listening. We'll be back soon to discuss more on how to survive within the back rooms, so until next time, have a wonderful day and be safe out there. I would like to say a very special thank you to our patrons, Rick Diculus, Izzy Klein, Caleb Hills, Zephyr the Cast Iron Crow, Belmex Zoro, Nathan Gear, Anakin Bumgardner, Sushi Penguini, Cullen Shaughnessy, Stephen Conger, My Friends Call Me PK, Jeff Nordley, Slim Steven, That One Random Guy, The Good Diamond, Undead, and World Ray. Thank you all for going that extra step to support us and what we do. It's greatly appreciated. If you would also like to get your name shouted out at the end of the episode, get access to episodes earlier, and other perks, go become a patron on our Patreon. For $1 a month, you can do those things and more. Thanks again for listening, and have a wonderful day.